Morning Reefers, I'm Daniel from Coralust, and today it's the more you flow. I hear a lot of people talk about misconceptions about flow in their aquariums, and I kind of want to just break it down and explain a few things for you. I know a lot of people who want to cram pack their tanks, or they have nothing in their tank and they're just beginning, so they're worried about too much flow because it could possibly dislodge a coral or frag and knock it into another coral. Now this is very common especially when you're first putting corals in your tank and you're afraid to glue them down and you haven't made your decision yet. So you'll just set them in there overnight only to find when you wake up in the morning that your chalice is knocked over on top of your Duncan and then they burned a hole through each other and now you just lost um, an investment or hopefully it'll grow back if you're lucky enough um, to have that happen. So here's the problem that people have. So they'll turn down their flow and then they wonder why their corals are doing bad. You know, they're trying to chase their numbers, they check their equipment, their lighting, everything, salt water is on point, but yet their corals are doing terrible. And I contribute a lot of that to flow in your aquarium. So one thing that you wanna check out is make sure that your corals are getting enough flow to bring them food, but also to remove waste. A lot of these corals absorb through the same tissue that they expel their waste. So if you don't have good flow, these corals may be sitting in their own filth. So that's something you wanna check into. So one of the easiest ways I've found to check your flow is if you feed your corals, um, I'm sure there's a couple different brands out there, but B vitamins in your aquarium will turn green, like almost a neon under the blue lights. So if you have some moon lights or something on and you squirt that in your aquarium, you should be able to see right away. If you have strong enough flow, it'll clear up. If not, you end up with a bright green, green glowing cloud um, oozing through your tank. So, and just because you have a big tank, you may have one powerful MP40 blasting across your tank, you may have dead spots on the bottom or in between rocks or it, from one coral growing, it may be actually shadowing another coral from getting the proper flow it needs. So. In the hobby, we usually have our return pumps, you know, coming in depending on what kind of tank you have, and then maybe we'll have one flow on each side, depending on, like I said, what setup you have. Now, it's not so much as how many pumps you have, is can this pump either push strong enough to force the water to bounce off the rocks and around your tank, or is it getting diffused and not actually the pressure hitting uh, the back of your tank or something. So, this is really important. I really wanted to kind of uh, go into more detail about the different pumps and the flow and kind of recommend what's important for each person. But there's just so many options, so many variables that there's no real definitive rules. It's kind of like you have to look at each tank and kind of use your judgment and go from there. But even front to back, a lot of people have deep tanks and they may only have current in the front or in the back and you just, you know, unless you have a lot of fish moving around crabs, you may inadvertently suffocate some corals in the back of your tank or in higher low spots. So check your flow. It's very important to the health of your corals. I would put that on probably one of my top five before lighting, before water quality, um, just because I've seen how fast corals can go downhill when you take the flow out. So even in a big tank, I thought you know leaving, leaving the pumps off for a few hours or something wouldn't be that that much of an issue but it is so take care of your tanks enjoy your aquariums and as always thanks for watching and happy reefing please leave your question or comments below and I'll try to get back to them as soon as possible I do appreciate people leaving their comments below or also on reef to reef in the forums I'm trying to get more involved with that so I can make these uh, answers visible for other people because a lot of times I answer questions and they may be a text or something or a personal message on Facebook and then everyone else kind of misses out on that learning experience. So this is why I do this just to reach the masses a little bit quicker even though I do enjoy working on a one-to-one -one basis with everyone but I always run out of time and then I feel terrible for the next person. So keep sharing, keep learning, the more you know. Thank you for being part of our online reefing community and until next time.